Hello students, welcome to Shirtback Academy. In our lesson today, we're going to begin section 6.6 .6 in the ITF Plus course. The topic for this lesson is common encryption uses. Let's begin. Encryption is the process of encoding information from its original form into a scrambled form. The original form of data information is called plain text. The scrambled form is called ciphertext. Only authorized users can decode encrypted data back to its plain text original form. Algorithms are complex rule sets that translate the data from plain text to ciphertext. Encryption keys are the passwords we use to encode and decode data that's sent in messages. The process of decoding data is called decryption. It translates scrambled ciphertext back into its original plain text form for viewing and modification. Ciphertext is the representation of data after plain text data has been encrypted using an algorithm. It is a scrambled data version that will require an encryption key to decode. Ciphertext includes an unreadable form of the original plain text data. The encryption algorithm will contain all the translation rules and patterns that are needed to decrypt the ciphertext. Private key algorithms will use the same password to encrypt and decrypt data. We also call these symmetric keys. Public key algorithms will use two different password keys for encryption and decryption. We call these asymmetric keys. There are three different data states for encrypted information. Data at rest, data in transit or motion, and data in use. Data at rest is information stored on a hardware device or in a file backup. The data is not being actively used by an application or CPU. Data at rest includes hard drives, cloud backups, and external storage devices. Data in transit is information stored within a computer's RAM memory or that's actively traveling across a network. RAM memory data is available for quick reading and updating. Some common data transit methods are email, text messaging, and file sharing. Data in use is information actively processed by applications within the operating system. It includes multiple current users viewing the same data. File level encryption is the encryption of data within individual files or folders. Encrypted folders will have all files contained within also undergo encryption. Unencrypted folders may still contain individually encrypted files. File systems perform data backups of encrypted files. During the backup state, the files still remain encrypted. Public key access control uses different key passwords for encryption and decryption. We also call these asymmetric keys. It's a common control method used with file level encryption. Disk level encryption is the process of encrypting entire volumes or partitions on a hard disk drive. It encrypts all the file system data within the volume, including file folder names and contents. Disk level encryption generally will use the same password keys for an entire volume or drive. Once an encryption key is verified, all data within the volume becomes readable to the user. TPMs are trusted platform modules. They are motherboard processors that assign encryption keys to specific hardware devices. The decryption process 
will only work on the assigned machine. A common data encryption standard is AES. It stands for Advanced Encryption Standard. AES is an electronic encryption standard created in 2001 by the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology. It created a standard for three different key and block sizes, 128, 192, and 256-bit sizes. AES uses symmetric key algorithms, which means the same key is used for encrypting and decrypting data. AES is still commonly used, including the U.S. federal government and many international business organizations. HTTP is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's the foundational protocol for all Internet data communications. Users can access hypertext documents that include hyperlinks that allow for accessing different websites. HTTPS is a secure extension of the HTTP protocol. It allows for secure data communications encrypted over the Internet. The use of encryption in sending and receiving traffic prevents many security attacks. HTTPS uses port 443 on the TCP protocol. Mobile device encryption is the encoding of data that's stored on tablets and smartphones. It encrypts all the data on the device and requires a passcode to access. Mobile device data becomes scrambled and unreadable to third parties. Our SIM data cards remain encrypted if someone happens to remove it from the device. Biometrics is the use of physical features of a person to authenticate to a mobile device. Some common examples are fingerprints and facial scans. Mobile devices will also encrypt all application data so that user activity cannot be monitored by attackers. Email encryption is the encoding of email messages to protect their contents from being read by third parties. Transport encryption will encrypt email messages between server computers. There is no direct link between sender and receiver. End-to-end -end encryption will encode and decode messages at their source and destination points. The data will remain encrypted during the entire transmission. Most email service providers will include encryption as a standard feature. We should always check our user settings for all the configurations. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. VPN creates a private network tunnel across a public network connection so that users can send and receive data as if they're directly connected to the private network. VPN software is installed or downloaded onto a user's device. It encrypts data to be sent over the VPN connection. This allows remote users to secure their data and information. VPN creates a point-to-point -point connection that uses dedicated circuits between the client computer and LAN server. That will conclude this lesson. In our next lesson, we will cover section 6.7, Business Security Concepts. If you have any questions about the contents of this lesson, please review the course notes and exam objectives for section 6.6. We thank you for following along in the video. We'll see you next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.